So I have made up my mind. Yes, I did ask you guys last episode whether or not I should use a key once I hit level 75 or should I use it now? I've made up my mind. I'm going to be using it now because apparently it doesn't matter if I use it now or then. Uh, the loot pool is still the same. It doesn't really matter regardless. So the benefit of me running it now would outweigh me waiting until level 75. So let, let's let's go ahead and take a look at the reason why I'm super excited today. Um, so I made two gems so far. Um, and one of these gems, yeah, uh, has lucky permanent on it, which is perfect because if I'm going to run a key, I need a room that is going to be lucky. But look what also ran over here. Super lucky. Now it does have chaotic on it, but we can get chaotic down by putting trivial on it. No problem at all. Uh, there's a trivial over here. Um, so let's go ahead and put super lucky on here. And then that is a permanent lucky, by the way, that's on the other one. It's a permanent lucky. <laughs> I'm so ready for this. So unfortunately me putting the next one on is gonna give me withering, but that's gonna give us super lucky and luck, giving us bonus luck, which I mean, I will take in a key vault. Um, I don't know, is there another level higher? I'm pretty sure there's more than just luck and super lucky, right? Is there not one that's in between? I don't know if I've seen that, <laughs> but either way, this is quite nice. Look at that. I mean, the only thing left to do is to take this and let's see, what else do we have? Trivial and crowded, um, which would make this a little bit nicer, but simple. I mean, we can put trivial on here. That should be good. What's on the other one? Oh, there's so many nice things. This could be a really fun vault to run. So I think this time I'm gonna make a bombing night. I believe that's how you say this. Uh, yeah, bombing night. <laughs> Uh, and this will be able to use our technically efficiency six to break this. And I just got 10. Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, we are going to use this on this bad boy right here. Place that in with these all surrounded to get ourselves that cluster. Ooh, that's actually kind of pretty when it does that transition. Ooh, I like that. And then... For the key, of course, this is gonna cost Echo. It is kind of expensive, but it is what it is, right? There's our Echo, there's our key mold. Oh boy. And then we need to do this to make our key. Put the key in here and put the Bomb Ignite on it and we get a Bomb Ignite key. Oh, I'm, I'm so ready for this. This is gonna be so good. So, I'm just about ready to go. I think I have everything on me. Oh boy. And I do have my key. My key is stored safely right here. Let's do this. This is going to be a very, very interesting vault with a lot of modifiers. Oh boy. First things first though. I mean, I do want to find the room. So as we go through looting, oh my gosh, look at that luck already showing itself. Ooh. Oh, this is good. This is real good. Definitely want to check the sides of these rooms. Oh, just like this, like right up here. That's not the one we need, but that's where these rooms would be. So on the mini map, you can see the rooms. And if you get, oh, there's another one. Okay, so that's Puffium. Man, I should have made a Puffium. Oh man, this is like the second Puffium room I've seen. Ooh, right here is the room. If I can get in and hope that mobs will leave me alone. That's that's the question. Oh boy. All right. Moment of truth. Bomb ignite. I'm in. I'm going to take all of the ore. I am so scared to open these chests because you know, you never know. Oh boy. Oh, hey, we got a friend here. By the way, the wither effect, nasty. This is nasty without having like any anti-wither. Poof, okay. Treasure chest, I hope I get more than just a common. Oh, how cool would it be to get on Omega roll? I, I, you know what, all I want, all I want is one thing. I, I, I just, just give me a dank, that's all I want. It's an Omega. With no dank, but it's an Omega. Okay, drawers, I mean, I'm just gonna take it. Um, 
Oh, we'll have to sort through this later. Didn't look like it gave me all that much, like, uh... A drill tip? That was... Come on, I need... I need, I, I need more than this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with, with this, but that was an Omega. Oh boy. Oh! Okay, Pog, okay, this is an, uh, just a common though. We got a shard, which uh, I don't really want to use that. Wow, I still did not get a dank. I was really hoping for a dank today. Oh man. Oh, I got a common backpack though. I'm sure it has nothing in it, yeah. I, but still, I would have preferred a dank. Darn. You know, I can't be too, too sad though. This is, I mean, it was kind of nice. Look at all the rolls we got. Okay, uh, and Vault Diamonds, um, and also Stars, okay. Is that it? That's it. All right, let's finish this vault. And now I get to really focus on looting. Uh, and it's kind of dangerous. Yeah, actually really dangerous. This right here is no fun. Oh boy. Woo! This is dangerous. Right there. There are too many mobs. Too many. How? Uh, uh, does my reach work? Oh, wow. Almost. Oh. Oh, the reach is good. I like this. That, no good though. <laughs> oh boy. I'm so glad I have this reach. Oh boy. See if I can't run this real quick. All right. Yep. Yeah, I've I've about had enough of the withering effect. It's still getting a little too dangerous. I'm out. I got what I wanted. I'm out. That was a rough vault. After getting back and looking at what I have on me, I have to say that was such a wait. Wait a minute. What? The one thing we got was a player damage trap that cost an Omega Pog. Uh, okay. This is actually really nice. This allows me to kind of AFK farms, or we could use it in another strategic way. Ooh, and then we also have some vector plates. I'm coming up with ideas. Anything else that we got from here that I'm kind of overlooking? Cause I don't think I, I mean, I, I, there's not a lot I can do with refined storage cables, honestly. Um, nor is there anything I can really do with nickel. I got nickel and aluminum. Um, we got a bunch of un unidentified stuff that we're gonna roll. Vault Diamonds and another Star Core, which is nice because that'll progress us a little bit closer, uh, of course, to getting to the uh, the Danks. But I mean, of course, we rolled a lot of ore. That was really nice. That was a, just a nice run. And then this right here, you may think it's really nice, but all it does is it creates a 14 by 14 island. Um, you can increase the size, but it basically rips your stuff that you have on the ground here and lifts it up into the sky, creating a floating island. Uh, kind of cool. Like, we could potentially do something with it. I don't know. Um, like, I mean, we could even do something over here. But I would like to take it instead and, and you know, upgrade it. It does require Terra Steel, though, to upgrade it. But other than that, I think that's about it. Other we got some, some drawers that I really don't want to do anything with. There's, like, no big use at the moment for me to use any of the drawers. And we did get another furnace. That is a thing. I mean, these barrels probably would have been nice if I would have got that early on. Other than that, that was it. I mean, we got a bunch of all diamonds that run, even though I really didn't run too much. Like, we left kind of early. I was just tired of being withered affected. That that was a rough ride without having wither immunity. This run literally changed everything. This one item has sparked a light bulb above my head. And, uh, well, when that happens, things start to get a little broken. And, yeah, they're going to start getting broken. I have a plan, and the plan is, well, let me just kind of give you a little sneak peek. Yeah, uh, you just saw that correctly. 
these can transfer items. So at the moment, my big thing is I cannot transfer items from place to place. Or can I? Warped plates, <laughs> warped plates allow me to transfer items and full stacks of items and so on and so forth. Um, so long as it's being transferred in there, this could be quite an awesome thing. I'm thinking about getting full blaze automation with a mob spawner. Maybe wondering how is that going to happen? You have to be standing by the mob spawner for it to work, right? <laughs> No, actually, you don't. Not with Batania, anyways. Let me explain. Batania has this interesting thing that allows mob spawners. By the way, I've done decorated this up. Uh, it allows mob spawners, which this one's, by the way, right by our base, to stay on even when you're not near it using a little thing called a life imbuer. Um, so this is a life imbuer. It is very, very cheap to make. Um, if you wonder how to get the ender air in a bottle, you just take a bottle and you right click it. You probably got it when you kill the dragon if you brought any bottles in. Um, but it's incredibly cheap in this pack, which is really nice. And uh, I believe it goes on top of the mob spawner if it doesn't just go onto it. I think it goes right on top. And if I can click it on top, there we go. And as you can see, it is on top of this. Now, how do we use this? Well, we're going to need a mana spreader. I'm gonna go ahead and get a mana splitter. Let's see, let's get a wand. And this actually needs to have the mana pulsed on to it. So yeah, the mana spreader needs to pulse onto it. I might have to raise this up one uh, just to make sure that it's getting up there. By the way, if you're wondering what these blocks are, they're the space blocks. Oh, they're, they're actually really nice looking. Um, so space block, I'll put you here. That's actually a different color one, but it looks good. Place that, and I'll just make sure that you're able to actually interact with the life imbuer. There we go. So this only needs six mana per tick to fully operate and run, um, which isn't a lot. And we should be able to supply that. No problem. Uh, once we get this up and running and it should be self-efficient. That's the goal. Uh, I'm going to be changing this mob spawner to blaze. Um, so that's the first thing I want to do. I probably want to take the imbuer off for right now and uh, get this mob spawner at least changed into blaze. Now I do have three blaze spawn eggs at the moment and I'm hoping that I can get these to be changed. It changed, but I don't want it to change back. Ow, quit. I want it to stay. Is it going to behave and stay? It looks like it is. It looks like it's gonna behave and stay. Now, the good thing is, is when I'm not around, this should stay. <laughs> so uh, when I'm not around, these mobs should do what I want them to do. And that is float down, land in a lava. The lava is going to drag them to the center point and they're gonna get teleported just like any other mob. Um, and I'm gonna show you how that's gonna work real soon. And notice, yeah, they don't care about anything in here. They don't care that there's torches. They don't care. They actually, their spawning condition is pretty high. You actually need, um, I believe, let's make sure to torch this up. Um, I think their spawning condition is light level 11 or lower um, to spawn. So light level 11 is pretty high. So yeah, we should be able to put the floor, cover it in lava, and then still use windows here. So we'll be able to see. I'm going to need to be very careful in how I do this. Luckily, lava flows pretty slow. Put this side in. And then we'll do this side and this side. Ow. Am I literally dying into... <laughs> what is going on? There we go. Now we're up there. Whew. And uh, hopefully the lava will spread out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It should spread out. If not, I'm going to have to drop it down. Uh, break each one of these pieces until it goes further down. Is that how this is going to work? Interesting. So I'm hoping that this lava pattern ends up working. I'm thinking it might. So I'll go ahead and place this in. And let's test. Let's place one lava over here. And I'll place the lava over here and we'll see how they converge. 
I'm hoping that they end up converging and pushing everything sort of right there on that plate. They should stop on the plate. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. That's exactly what I want. Okay. So with that knowledge, I should be good. To go ahead and place this here. This here and get out of here. Because <laughs> I do not want to be down there. And that should be perfect. So now we, now we should, uh, I mean, while we're here, blazes will spawn and they'll see me, um, which is not good. Um, I want them to go down. And if they can't see me, they should slowly but surely be pushed along. And then hit the plate. And they should teleport to the other spawning plate. There we go. It happened. That one should be pushed as well. It's a little slow. And, and it may take like another one to push the other one over. I don't know. It is pretty slow. But it's happening. Now in here, you can see the blazes are right where we want them. Um, and we want to actually kill them where they're at. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab that player trap. And I don't think I can place it. Yeah, there we go. Place it right underneath them. They take damage. They die. They drop their blaze rods. Ah, couldn't be better. And uh, this is what we're hoping for. Now, this also drops experience. So I was thinking about utilizing this right here. Uh, because I'm kind of done with this farm. We kind of used it. Um, and I'm thinking this would be a pretty good farm here for collecting the experience that drops and converting it into bottles. Um, so the vacuum hopper here, we can set this to front. Um, and then I might also have to use like some down scalers on it to kind of lower its range. Um, but I could put this in here, modular routers. I can put a vacuum upgrade. So... Vacuum upgrade, vacuum augment upgrade. And this right here should turn. Let's grab that. Turn the experience that it collects, which this is an upgrade, by the way, for the hopper. You put that in there. This all already has a range. We select the type that we want. We want this to be turned into bottles of enchanting. And then all we got to do is just pull the items out and we can have it go wherever we want. Uh, probably be another container, but yeah, this should now collect experience. So now there's a couple of things that I definitely want to get done uh, as far as the backside goes. I need to take this out. Uh, we're probably going to clear the walls and make the walls look a little bit nicer. I don't know if the glowstone's going to stay, but we'll see. We'll definitely make sure the walls are nice and gray. And then the bottom, I'm going to make this like so. Very kind of futuristic, even though this is not 100% what the plan was, but we got this. There we go. It'll probably get covered with some slag bricks. Same on here. Um, now, on the side, I need a dropper. Now, I don't know if the dropper will drop directly onto this plate. Um, we'll see. If not, I might have to have this drop down one, but I'm going to grab this because this is where the fun is going to take place. So right here we have our item router. It's going to be facing this way. And then I need to take my dropper module. And we're going to say drop from the back. Place that in. And then um, let's go ahead and place this. I don't know. Right here for right now. And we'll take this out of here. This needs to go inside here. Let's go ahead and break this. This needs to go in here. So now those are linked. Um, and I just need a button. Because I'm going to pulse this. Let's see. Can we set this to pulse? Pulsed. So when this receives a pulse, it should activate. Or at least hopefully that's what should happen. And it should send the item to this plate. There we go. Look at that. And the item just gets transferred right over. That is... That's 
Beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what I want. Except, down here is where some magic's gonna happen. Um, so, underneath my barrel, which is gonna be my main storage, we're gonna hook up some piping. And of course, this is going to get piped to. And then I'm just gonna use a high extraction module. That is going to make sure it sends um, all of the blaze rods over here. And so we should end up with a buffer full of blaze rods. And now I can get a RF tools timer. Let's see, do I have a timer laying around? This looks like a counter. There's a timer. And what we'll do is we'll just set this timer to some ambiguous number. Um, at the moment, I don't know exactly how often I'm going to need it. So let's just do 600, uh, or actually 1,200 for right now. And we'll just see if that number works. So 1,200. It just sent one. Now notice it's doing the craziness over there because it has nowhere for it to go just yet. Um, let's give it a place to go. So back over here at our, uh, our mob spawner, we're going to set up just a little thing with our endo flame. Uh, we basically need our endo flame here. And then right here, I can go ahead and place that plate and that item should spawn onto it. And this is where the fun's going to happen. Let's grab grass right here. And then seed. I'm going to grab an overgrowth seed. And we are going to place this with an overgrowth seed. And then we are going to place our endo flame on that. That should leak to the mana spreader. And we are so close to this being completed. All we got to do is right click this on top. Make sure these are linked, which they should automatically be linked and that should pulse. Let's go ahead and make sure. I think my wand is in somewhere. Wands in the back. No, wands are here. So yeah, this should be linked. And so every time that pulses, that should give this mana spreader enough mana to get to this. And that's where the fun is supposed to, it should happen. Let's let these guys get out of here. I've got to somehow get these torches out of here as well. But you can kind of see the idea. And I also think I just realized, yeah, this needs a pulse mana spreader. Um, because we have to tell it basically where to go. Like, we have to tell it when to fire mana. I don't think it just fires mana on its own, unfortunately. So let's see. Let's put this in bind mode. We'll bind this to that. I still think, I hope that's high enough. I know there's a lot of noises going on. And then I guess we'll just use another timer. And this is where we'll just have to figure out what is a good time for this. Like what is good timing for all of this to work? Let's place some interesting glass. Let's do this here. And I'll actually have the timer facing down. As you can see, that sent a mana pulse. But we don't want that to go that often. Every 60. I need to figure out what the perfect timing is going to be for this. So if I've done my math right, uh, the, this thing uses 6 mana per tick. This sends out 160 mana. Uh, and then this holds 160 mana. Which means one burst... We should be looking at close to 25, I believe. No, we need, uh, let's see, tick delay. 25 should be good. It would be more like 26, actually. Just to save on a little bit more mana. So it should receive a burst. Every 26 ticks. Now, keep in mind, this is not able to keep up because we're not sending it fast enough. So, that's where I'm going to have to kind of change this and figure out the math on this one as well. So, I think I got it working. Here's the math, all right? So, these two both produce normally 1.5 mana per tick. Uh, when they're on here, that'll be doubled. So, both of these together should produce 6 mana uh, per tick, which is exactly the rate that this needs. And so... All I had to do was put a stack, a single stack augment um, on this. Let me talk about that real quick on the dropper. 
By the way, they're still getting crammed. I gotta figure the issue out up here. Um, but inside this dropper has a stack augment. Just one of them is going to send two items every time it gets pulsed. And that is exactly the amount that we need. I have this set to 800. I think it's, it would probably get away with less. Um, I don't know the exact amount that a blaze rod, uh, how many seconds or how many ticks a blaze rod lasts, but I think it's more than uh, coal. But anyways, notice all this sound. Well, luckily, Batani also has another item that should hopefully get rid of some of this awful sound that we're hearing. We probably want to put this here and hopefully that stops the sound of all of that. This is called a burger mute, by the way. Um, so let's teleport back. And I'm hoping this sort of lowers that teleportation sound just a bit. Putting the mute there. Doesn't really seem to be doing a whole lot. But does this work? It's still, they're still bunching up. And what are they getting caught on? They're just not wanting to go down. Hmm. You know what? I don't know why I didn't think about this sooner. But... Why don't I just basically take the blazes, right? Spawn them right on top of the platform. Like, come on. Like, Chosen, you should have thought about this. Like, I could literally just... Oh, I don't know why I didn't think about this sooner. I bet the player damage trap, if this works, I'd almost guarantee that that damage trap also will work. So, I just need to take this platform... Grab this. Spawn them here. Directly on top. And just do the player damage. Directly on top. What? Like that should work. We'll find out. And like that should keep. The blazes. Perfectly in here. Like they should spawn right there. We'll have to see. Oh my gosh, this that literally satisfied the whole problem. I, they literally spawn right there, they die, the loot gets picked up, and we're good to go. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that! Yeah, and it's working now. Oh, that's so much better. So one last thing, yep, this number's also wrong. Uh, 600 is roughly what the duration should be. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is going to be self-efficient. Like, for me just sitting here kind of waiting, I'm, I, we'll see if setting this to 600 is going to work, but it just doesn't seem self-efficient yet. And it just doesn't seem like it, the, the blazes produce enough to cover the cost of keeping it open, which is incredibly weird. Well, for right now, I think this is going to have to be just, just how it is, honestly. I mean, this is... I, I think next episode, I am definitely going to go about transferring mana. Like, we have to transfer mana, I think, over to that spot um, and basically fill a mana pool and let that mana spreader use a mana pool instead of us using the uh, the mana uh, or using the, uh, the blaze. Because I want to be able to not only farm blaze rod, I also want to be able to substitute it. And at the moment, we do have infinite mana being generated, and it's more than enough. Uh, if you notice, I did actually add two more, or I added another sapling, and I just basically have this running off of this, and it actually doubled the speed, and I put another furnace in, and it's working perfect. Like, I'm basically, that almost that whole mana battery is, is about full. Um, so, this is working really well, and I would love to be able to get that blaze spawner up and running, and then we could, I guess, turn it into really any spawner that we wanted to run, um, and then just collect any items automatically, at that point so that would be pretty nice to just have something that's automatic running and at the moment it is running and it is automatic it's just not self-sufficient and so next episode i think definitely we're going to be working with some mana carts and getting some of that stuff set up but as of today i think that's enough for today we definitely got a lot done and uh, i'm super excited to, that i was able to use my key and also unlock the mods and be able to utilize them today pretty awesome but of course I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks going to Dogu. Dogu. Dogu? It's Dogu. 
<laughs> Thank you so much for your amazing support. And of course, guys, if you're interested in joining the amazing Discord community and maybe supporting the channel out that way, of course, all you gotta do is go to discord.gg and you can get your own custom sign added into the world. Um, also, you get access to world downloads and subservers. So be sure to check that out. Uh, Vault Hunter subserver is still available. There are still people playing on it and they're having a blast. So, of course, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Click that subscribe button, check out the merch store, and as always, thanks for watching.